In this topic, we're going to discuss respiration and introduction to respiration. So we're going to look at what is respiration and what is ATP. What is the energy from respiration needed for? Where is the energy from? And what are the two types of respiration? So what is respiration? Well, here you can see a tanker that's exploded into flames. And the combustion of the fuel has released a lot of energy in the form of light and heat. Oxygen is used up in the process and carbon dioxide is given off. Now think about this reaction inside your bodies, although it doesn't give off all that energy at once. So your living cells need energy, and we call this energy chemical energy. The fuel used to provide the energy in the cells is called glucose. But unlike burning petrol, the energy is released very gradually in a series of small enzyme-controlled reactions, which we call respiration. So the definition of respiration is the chemical reactions that break down nutrient molecules in living cells to release energy. Now don't confuse respiration with breathing. Respiration is a chemical process, whereas breathing is inhaling and exhaling. So here's a picture of a cell. Inside the cell you have tiny organelles called mitochondria, and these are represented by the red circles. This is where aerobic respiration takes place. So aerobic respiration is respiration in the presence of oxygen. So it requires glucose and oxygen and chemical energy is released. Now some cells make chemical energy from glucose without oxygen. So we call this anaerobic respiration. Now you might come across the word ATP. This is a molecule that stores chemical energy. So during respiration, ATP is made, and this molecule can move to all parts of the cell where energy is needed. When it gets broken down, it releases the energy. So remember that all living cells need energy, and you need to know some of the processes that require energy from respiration. So can you think of what energy from respiration will be needed for? Well, there's muscle contraction, which brings about movement, cell growth and division, maintenance of body temperature, active transport, excretion, reproduction, and protein synthesis. So I want you to add extra notes to your handout. Let's go through these one by one. The first is muscle contraction, which brings about movement. So when muscles contract, they bring about movement. And this is because there are proteins inside that slide past each other. And as they slide past each other, they shorten the muscles so they make it contract. And this requires energy from respiration. Cell division and growth. So cells divide by a process called mitosis, which we'll cover next year. These cells divide to replace old cells or to repair damaged areas. Now, organisms grow when lots of cells divide. So they grow by making more cells. And this cell division needs a lot of energy from respiration. The third is maintenance of body temperature. So homeothermic animals are warm-blooded animals, and they need to keep their bodies at the same temperature, even if the environmental temperature changes. So can you think of two groups of vertebrates that do this? Well, you've got the birds and the mammals. So when their body temperature drops, they need to become active so that they can release energy in the form of heat to warm them up. They can also fluff up their fur or feathers. And if the body temperature rises, then they can sweat to cool down. Active transport, we've covered before. Can you remember what active transport is? This is when ions or molecules are moved against their diffusion gradient, and this requires energy from respiration. So remember that nitrates can get absorbed into the root hair cells by active transport, and active transport also requires special protein carrier molecules sitting on the plasma membrane that help to move the ions against their concentration gradient. Then there's excretion. 
This is the removal of metabolic waste products from the organism. So for example, we excrete carbon dioxide in the lungs and urea in the kidneys. So excretion requires energy from respiration. Now we're going to discuss reproduction in more detail next year. What you need to know is that new individuals need to be produced so that continuation of the species occurs and spread of the range. Now gametes are produced, so gametes are your egg and sperm, and these need to be transferred. When they combine, an embryo is formed and this needs to grow. So these processes require energy from respiration. <clears throat> also, think about the flowers on the jacaranda tree. They need energy from respiration to be produced. So where is this energy from? Well, in all living cells, energy is released from food substances, for example, glucose. And this energy is in a chemical form which can be used by the cell. So this process is called respiration. So plants make their own glucose during photosynthesis using sunlight energy. And animals get their energy from eating plants or other animals. And finally, there are two types of respiration. You've got aerobic and anaerobic respiration. So aerobic respiration requires oxygen. So it releases a large amount of energy in the cells by the breakdown of food substances in the presence of oxygen. Anaerobic respiration releases a relatively small amount of energy by the breakdown of food substances in the absence of oxygen. So keywords to remember, aerobic requires oxygen large amount of energy, anaerobic, does not require energy, and small amount of energy. So in summary, we looked at what respiration is, so you need to know that definition. We looked at ATP, the molecule that stores the chemical energy. We looked at the seven different processes that require energy from respiration, where this energy is from, so it's from glucose, and what are the two types of respirations we've looked at? Aerobic and anaerobic respiration. And that concludes our lesson. The end.